Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Allah Loves. So we talked about consistency. And if you take the idea of consistency, the methodology of consistency as being the most beloved quality of good deeds, you then have to pair it off with the most beloved of good deeds. And we know that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said the very first thing that you will be asked about on the day of judgment is your prayer, as salah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, as he was passing away, he said, as salatu salah wa stawsu bin nisa'i khayra. Your prayer, your prayer, and treat your women well. So prayer is the most fundamental practiced pillar of Islam after a person enters into the fold of Islam with the testimony of faith. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us to pair off consistency with this fundamental pillar. This hadith that we're going to cover today is from Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him. He said, I asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, Ayyul a'mali ahabu ilallah, which of the actions are most beloved to Allah? The Prophet, peace be upon him, responded, As salatu ala waqtiha, prayer on time. In another narration, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, As salatu li awwali waqtiha, prayer at the beginning of its time. It sounds really simple, but let's talk about this for a moment. You know, a lot of times when you're talking about Qiyamul Layl and Taraweeh prayer and all of the Sunnah prayers and these different extra deeds that we could do, we forget the bare basic prayer. The first thing we'll be asked about the obligation, the most important part of our religion, which is the five daily prayers, praying them on time, guarding them, making sure that you're following all of the pillars of the prayer itself, making sure you're not omitting anything, neglecting anything. That is the most beloved thing that you could do to Allah. So even though we should be talking about the night prayer and we should be talking about the Sunnah prayers because those serve as a cover for those prayers, realize that this is the core of it all. And that's why the Prophet peace be upon him said that on the day of judgment, when a person comes and they have deficiencies in their obligatory prayer, then Allah says, well, where are the voluntary prayers? And Allah starts to fill in the missed obligatory prayers or the deficiencies in the obligatory prayers. So the voluntary prayers are meant uh, in, in many ways to cover for the deficiencies that you have in the obligatory prayers. And we obviously have thoughts that take us away from our prayer, things that happen in the prayer, distractions, all of these things that happen. But let's focus on this for a moment. Prayer at the beginning of its time. What makes it so beloved to Allah? And this is the case for all of the prayers, except for Salat al-Isha, except for the Isha prayer in which there's preference in delaying it um, a little bit. Now, what makes it so special? It shows Allah that when you hear Hayy ala salah, Hayy ala falah, come to the prayer, come to success, that you are longing for him as you come to the prayer. Ibn, Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, come to Allah bi qalbin mushtaq, with a heart that is longing for him, with a heart that is in anticipation of him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, arihna biha ya Bilal, comfort us with the prayer, O Bilal. He said the prayer was the coolness of his eyes. So prioritizing the prayer shows that you're prioritizing Allah in your life. Now Allah understands that there are things that get in the way in terms of career and school and sometimes travel and things that will cause you to have to push a prayer to a later time within the boundary. And of course, if you're traveling, combining uh, those prayers, but still on your normal day at a normal time, how early do you pray the prayer once the window enters of that prayer? And you'll notice, subhanAllah, that at the end of the day, you're going to pray the same five prayers. It's just a mindset that you have. Some people wait till five minutes before the next prayer. Some people do it five minutes within the first prayer. At the end of the day, you're still praying the same five prayers, but it's an attitude, a mindset that you have with Allah. And Allah says in the Quran about the hypocrites, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا When they get up for the prayer, they get up uh, lazy, they don't feel like doing it. It's just like, ah, they're dragging their feet. They barely catch it. Allah also tells us about the nations that came before. That there came after them a people that lost the prayer. And they followed their desires. And so because of that, they would find punishment. And Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he commented on that. He said, first of all, they lost the prayer means that they started to delay the prayer beyond its permissible time. So they would pray the equivalent of a Asr prayer at the time of Maghrib instead. And that if you delay your prayer enough as habitually, eventually you're gonna start going into the next prayers. Eventually you're gonna start missing prayers altogether. It's just a natural regression that takes place. And then they followed their desires. In the ayah that came before that, that verse, Allah mentions in Surah Maryam that there was a group of righteous people 
when they heard the verses of Ar-Rahman, when they heard the verses of the Most Merciful, kharru sujjadan wa bukiya, then they fell on their faces in prostration and crying. And Umar had a very beautiful way of explaining this verse. He said that that verse where Allah mentions the righteous, they had khudur, which is to, uh, to humble yourself in bodily fashion, to stand before Allah in the proper way, to guard the physical elements of your prayer. So they fell on their faces in prostration and they had khushur, humility, which is the internal discipline that caused them to cry. This next generation lost the physical discipline and they lost the internal discipline. So outwardly, they lost their prayers. Inwardly, they longed for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll end with a very powerful narration from Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah on this idea of prayer. He said, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ That when a person, when the servant of Allah enters into prayer, ثُمَّ الْتَفَتَ And then he turns away from Allah. Not a physical turning away from Allah, but internally turns away from Allah. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَ Allah says to that servant, يَا عَبْدِي إِلَىٰ أَيْنْ إِلَىٰ خَيْرًا مِنِّي O oh my servant, where are you turning to? Are you turning to better than me? Have you found something better than me? More worth it than me? So again, start with the basics, and especially in Ramadan, if you can get anything right, if you can get your five prayers done on time and make it a habit to start praying it early in the time so that you don't start missing the prayers, then that would be a blessed task with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet peace be upon him said that when a person comes on the day of judgment, having prayed their five prayers on time, not omitting anything out of understanding their importance, then they have a promise with Allah that he will enter them into paradise. We ask Allah to enter us into paradise, to forgive us for our shortcomings, and to make us amongst those who long for him. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.